Hello, everybody. So I've mocked up a hole shape. It doesn't fit together very well, but you can sort of see the impression I'm going for. You can see there's no roof, or rather, you can't see the roof, and that's because I've gone ahead and added in a roof layer which can be toggled on and off. I don't have a button for that yet because I haven't figured out the exact mechanic. But, don't put the roof back on, there you go. Now, uh, when you are building your base, all of your roof tiles start on the roof layer and you can toggle them on and off. But when you're going to go and salvage a ship, obviously the roof is completely opaque until you break through, at which point uh, you can you get toggle on and off all the roof tiles in that in that area. So you can't tell what's inside. Maybe you can scan it using some kind of equipment. I've also gone ahead and built an important mod, and that is the storage mod. And this is the mod which allows us to build more complex storage objects. So these are center boxes, and these are plastic boxes. You can see that up in the top there it says, not enough plastic for these plastic boxes. Well, obviously, I don't have any plastic. I don't have any concept of plastic. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens. Oh, they didn't get built. I'm shocked. So these are center boxes, and they're just bins where you can stick stuff. Uh, and if you can see in the upper right-hand corner, it says 100 kilograms of metal. Zero kilograms out of 100 kilograms of metal. If I click on it, I can actually change the type, and it'll change over to plastic. Okay, well, let's go ahead and cheat just a little bit. We'll go over here into our sidebar. And we'll find these center boxes, and we'll go ahead and fill them up. Now that we're done cheating, we have 100 kilograms of plastic, and we can build our plastic boxes. And you can see they kind of look like washing machines. So, um, I've just obviously been throwing this stuff together pretty quick. It's only been a couple of hours since the last time I made a video uh, in terms of work. I do have a full-time job. But I am relatively pleased with how fast this is going and how easy it is to change this stuff. Let me go ahead and show you the mod, since it's actually a core feature, but it is implemented as a mod that allowed me to create these center boxes and plastic boxes. I think you will like it. So the mod is obviously called the storage mod, and you can see that it's just a standard mod. It introduces some resource types, but those resource types are not uh, uh, the only things that the storage mod can store. The storage mod doesn't, it just adds these resources in, but it adds, adds them into the vast pool of resources. The individual storage objects, like this guy here, uh, these use a, um, here it is, a, f a function system adaptable resource class. Uh, now there's already a function system resource class, and that's just the one that allows, you know, the solar panels to generate electricity and stuff, and it just stores one kind of, uh, of resource. These also only store one kind of resource, but you can switch which resource. And, uh, and that's very useful, as you might, as you might guess. You, what you might notice is that these have a state attached to them. And you can see that you can store exactly one kind of thing. So the only things that can be stored in these are bricks, which is the most common type of physical good. But what it does is it actually goes through all of the resources that have been registered, and they all have their own, their own category of, of class here. So I've got state brick and state brick. If I change this to dust or cloth or massive or liquid or gas, I wouldn't be able to stick it in those bins. I can't stick electricity or work in those bins because they're obviously not bricks. So it works out quite nicely. There's very little in the way of um, scripting required on your end if you wanted to create more kinds of bins that do different things. And of course you can stack stuff, so you could have a bin that requires electricity to run. Whatever you'd like. Uh, in addition, there are some more complicated objects. Here is the context button that you press in order to change the brick type. So, you know, changing it from metal to plastic. And you can see that this is this is not a custom class. This is the standard class, but it has uh, the standard class has some unusual features. Uh, it has show when target has class named functional system adaptable resource. And it shows it whether it's an object or a mob. It, it's okay with it either way. There's no point in showing it on empty space because there's no adaptable resources on empty space. There's nothing on empty space. If you go down into this to the button, the button actually calls a uh, on-click of a context button pop-up trigger. And this is a triggering function which helps us uh, to trigger a, uh, a function on the target object 
without needing to write a whole class just to trigger a function on the target object. It makes it a lot easier to handle these sorts of things without doing any coding yourself. Although you do have to understand what functions you want to trigger because there's no no smart fill on these. You can't press tab and fill it out. Um, but small steps, right? So it was a very uh, it's a very small mod in comparison to what I've done, you know, making mods for Kerbal, for example, is is much more difficult. Uh, but the the amount of of use it has is quite high. I can build literally anything to store anything at this point. Um, you know, I can I can create a, a tailoring station that stores cloth. I can create uh, bins that store dust um, or whatever I need to do, and it all just works at this point. Uh, so that's that's fairly straightforward. And I could create a mod which does almost anything. Uh, without actually having to create a whole bunch of special case classes. You only need the one class that does the heavy lifting, and then everything else can just kind of integrate in from outside. That's where I've gotten, and uh, I wanted to mention, I don't know if you're still listening, but YouTube is really bad about actually giving me the notes that people send. If I haven't responded to you and you sent me a YouTube note, it's not because I've been ignoring you. It's because YouTube has put literally every YouTube note I've gotten for the past six months into the spam folder. Don't know why. Uh, and it doesn't notify you when that happens. And if you mark it as not spam, it doesn't put it in your regular directory anymore. So those are all basically dead. I, I can't do anything about that. Uh, your best bet would be to either comment or to message me on Twitter. Um, where I am simply Craig Perko. Have a good one.